In this example, we're going to look at how to create a loop so that we can instantiate many power copies based on the number of features uh, defined as inputs. So we're using the access system as an input. So based on the number of access systems we find in a cat part, we'll instantiate that number of uh, power copies. So this is the, uh, the last demonstration that we looked at where we instantiated a single power copy based on one single access system. So we'll use this kind of as um, the start point for our next application. So to begin with for this application I've created uh, demo 3 and again we've created an attribute for length and for diameter. The next uh, thing is to create a sequential behavior and sequential behavior will just give it a name and of course we have to do the same steps we're going to bind object or uh, I'm sorry bind type and then bind object um, you'll notice that this is a very uh, well used or highly used pattern that uh, we'll use over and over, especially when working with uh, a cat part. Okay, the next thing we want to do is we want to create a rule so that we can search for our access systems. So let's give that a name, then we'll assign a couple of uh, attributes. The first attribute will be an input and this is where we're going to query the part for access systems. The uh, second will be an output and we're going to create a list of access systems. So we're hoping to find uh, at least one or several access systems in our part. And using this list as you can see we'll get a size which should be one or greater and then ultimately we'll use that size to perform a loop that number of times and instantiate our power copy. So for the for the part in you know we can go ahead and link that to the object because this is the object represents the cat part now and we're going to query the cat part and get a list so let's go ahead and look at the details of the list. So this list will equal the part dot query. And we're going to query for an access system. Like this. So that one line um, will give us the total number of accesses found in a part. And then we'll use that that list and the count to, to per perform a loop. So, so far we've just been using um, this sequential combination. Under the sequential combination we also have a loop behavior. So we're going to use this loop behavior to do a loop. And if we expand this out under loop, we have the number of iterations. The number of iterations will be the size. So if we have one access system, the number of iterations will be one. If we have 10, the number of iterations will be 10. So we can connect these together by linking them. Okay, something else that has to be done here when we're using a loop, we have to get an item the item we're going to get is going to be the access system. So when we talk about get item, we're talking about getting the actual feature of the access system. So the index will be the iteration number. So let's think about this loop a little bit. We run through the loop, we're getting the number of iterations, which will be the total number of uh, iterations that the loop is going to go through. Um, the iteration will be the current number that's being evaluated. So you can see this iteration by default is at 1. When we get the item, we're going to get the item, um, which in this case will be an access system, from our list. Our master list is here. So this is the list of access systems that we found in the part. 
we're going to get one of those access systems each time the loop iterates. So um, now understanding that, we're going to link to this act this iteration or this we're going to link the index to the iteration. So now the iteration starts at one. We'll get item number one from the list. Now what list will we access? Well let's link this list to our access output list. So now we can say at each iteration or we're going to get index number one from this list. So we'll get axis one, axis two, axis three, and so forth. Finally, we'll, we'll end up with an item. This item will be uh, each axis that's acquired from the list based on its, its index value. So again, as the loop runs, this item will be output as, you know, axis one, axis two, axis three, and so forth. So our next objective is is to um, actually create the instantiate template behavior. So for instantiate template, you know we need to add uh, an attribute, which is going to be a pointer because it's a feature, and we're going to call it axis. We're calling it axis because that's the input that's required from our power copy. It, you know, we determined that when we made the power copy that that would be called axis. So our destination again will be the the root of the part. And uh, you know, we haven't created the filter catalog, so we need to do that step. So we can't complete the instantiate template until we create the catalog. So let's do that a second. And we want to we want to filter the catalog one time because we're going to use one power copy so we'll do it at this level we don't want to do it inside the loop because then we'd be accessing the catalog each time the loop runs and we'll just reorder this thing up here okay so there's our catalog and then we can add this name attribute it has a string and we can provide the name which is power copy dot one okay all right so now we have our feature that we're filtering that we're filtering from the catalog and we can say this is the feature And I think the last thing that we need to do is we need to link this access system to this item. So let's do that. Create a link from access to item. Okay, so just to recap, we're defining the root of our cat part here. We're querying for an access system and generating a list. So we're getting the input from the root of the part we're querying for access systems, we're generating a list, we're filtering the catalog for our power copy. Inside the loop, we're getting the number of iterations that our loop must run. It's giving us an iteration value based on uh, the number of times it's looping. Then from the get item from list, we're accessing the index based on its iteration number of the loop. So as it iterates one two three four from the list we're getting that index value and then we're accessing the list which is coming from which is coming from our get access system list so this list you can see is connected and then finally we're getting the access system from the list as the item that's being output and we're using that item as our access system. So that's how it works. And now uh, let's save it and generate our workbench. And let's try it. One access, of course, they can be, uh, they don't have to be on the same plane or in the same orientation. Okay, so now we have several access systems which we can 
now instantiate. So you go back to our workbench, you select the finger, you select demo, and instantiate the power copies. So it's generating a list of it generated a list of access systems and then it filtered the catalog and then it uh, looped through until it populated all of our power copies. And they all show up here in the tree.